All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Caden. Welcome to whatever new podcast. Um, this one's on Colorismo. Yeah, if y'all want to introduce yourselves, you can go ahead. Um, please say your name, pronouns, year, major, and hometown, and whoever'd like to go first. My name is Anna. Um, I'm a first year, and my major is genetics and genomics. My pronouns are she, her. All right, I can go next. My name is also Anna. Um, I'm a fourth year biological sciences major, also minoring in education and Chicano studies. And yeah, I'm really excited to be here and talk about colorismo today. I'll go next. My name is Maya. I'm a first year. I'm a biological science major. I'm from San Francisco and my pronouns are she, her. Yay. I'm super glad that everyone could be here today. This will be a really exciting topic. Um, so again, we're talking about colorismo and I guess I want to open up with sort of asking how you guys define colorismo um, and sort of how how the definition and examples of colorismo have been shaped by like your own experiences growing up as Latinx, like Chilat women um, or women identifying. So for me, it's, I guess it would be like discrimination against um, people who are usually like from Latin, that are from Latin America but they're darker so um usually it's people that are have like more indigenous blood right and that um are more darker and look more indigenous and like people who are from like for, like for example in Mexico like I've seen that it's like lighter skinned Mexican people think that darker skinned Mexican people are like more inferior they're lesser than or they're like not like they're 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 like oh like they're ugly or they or they will say just like kind of like slurs um and different things and so i kind of just see it as like they just see that they think that darker skin tones are inferior and i feel like this is because of like that it was kind of like ingrained in, the, in them that like oh you know like our colonizers were white and so like because the colonizers were white like the colonizers like itself kind of like put that in there they're like oh like we're better like you're not so then it just kind of stayed there you know so my mm -hmm. just definition would be like that would be that just because that because you're darker skinned you're less than and mm -hmm. that's it. just just because your skin color like not literally nothing else so literally just because your skin color is darker mm -hmm. we're literally from mexico or from other different places right like you're the same same country mm -hmm. you live in the same country just because your skin color is literally like a tiny bit darker or even a, like you're just you're just you're less than. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, Anna, you pretty much like hit it on the spot. Um, yeah, so basically like colorismo or colorism just refers to like discrimination based on skin color. Um, like you were saying, not just from like people from like Latin America, but definitely roots back to like um, the African continent, right? And just people of like black descent. Um, I feel like, yeah, it roots back to like slavery with the colonizers, I mean, you can see how like people were dehumanized just basically like because of the color of their skin, right? Um, and I feel like even though like slavery ended, right? It's still super prevalent like in our in our society today. I feel like like in my experience, I like within my own families, like um, obviously like we have a lighter complexion. We are of Me Mexican descent, but we do have a lighter complexion. But like within my own family, I see how like my family discriminates like people from our own culture they're Mexican también, pero just because they do have darker skin, um, they make all these like really infuriating comments. And I guess that's something that hopefully like we talk about later, like how is it that we can like talk oh, to definitely. our families like more about this? Um, oh, definitely. <laughs> it's just super duper infuriating, but yeah. Yeah, um, you guys, both um did a really good job of I think talking about it um I would yeah emphasize the part that like it's also it can be very prevalent within uh, your own community um especially like you guys talked about Mexico and uh, Latin America um that it's just uh like really divisive in between or in within a community itself um and that's really um can be very frustrating and can be very like um divisive and just uh like 
like you guys were talking about um how people just say comments and slurs and it's it's really like why we're all from the same community we're all the same um but one just has more melanin or one's just their 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 complexion is a little bit darker because of you know maybe one or two ancestors that they have that you don't but you guys share the same soil you guys grow you guys are from the same place so yeah yeah definitely you guys I mean you guys also already said this but you guys did a very good job of like defining it calling it out um kind of something that I do want to touch on is that it is still a present day issue in the countries that were in places like Mexico and in Central America there's still indigenous populations there that are still actively receiving this kind of face-to-face -face discrimination too um and there's like a privilege in a sense that we get to talk about that in a more removed sense as more observers and less experiencers um but it, it it is still it is still present it's going on and it's not just also a thing in the past but it is as kind of like what you said in the, in the beginning Anna highly instilled into our culture and like primarily the way that they did that by like the legal system was like illegitimizing um people of color as citizens and sort of relating them to animals and sort of helping feed this view and ideology that people of color are lesser than. Um, and then also by illegitimizing them and like, you know, blocking paths to citizenship, making them further kind of dehumanized or considered less than. And I'm really glad that you guys also bring up the point that there are a lot of slurs that still go around because there are, and I don't know, can't speak for everyone's household, but um, my dad especially is kind of, <laughs> he's kind of guilty of this. Um, he'll like kind of use slurs, but he'll like, he'll look down on darker people like in a noble way. Like he's not insulting them directly, you know, but he, you know, he talks about them like they're simple people, you know, and it's like, what is, what does that mean? You know, like you say that, like, they don't have like complex needs and, you know, like they don't want an education and, you know, like their sacrifices aren't made, aren't, aren't made out of necessity in comparison to like desire or something or like some other like intrinsic push but there is like still a wide use of slurs and parents don't always um know when to not use them <laughs> um and talking about it can be very awkward like I like when I try to talk about it my dad's very like Psh. you know like very dismissive like what do you what do you know like you're a kid what do you know and I'm like what you know, you dropped out of high school. What do you know? <laughs> um, no offense, not to be an elitist asshole, but <laughs> um, you know, but it's like. Mm. <laughs> I was just going to mention one thing that I really, really dislike that my family members do is like the first thing they'll notice about someone is literally their skin color. Like a family member the other day got their their COVID test. Mm -hmm. sorry COVID vaccine um and the first thing like they come to tell me was like oh it was this person with this skin color who like who uh gave me my shot or whatever but I'm like okay pero yes okay like well, why are you telling me that and then I try to generate like these conversations with them but they just dismiss me as I think you were saying Kaden mm -hmm. um and it's just super duper infuriating <laughs> But yeah, I just kind of wanted to bring that up. No, no, you're that's totally valid. Um, Anna, the other Anna. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. So, like, okay, so same here. So, um, my dad and my grandparents, not really my mom, because like my mom was like born here, so she obviously, you know, um, but my grandparents weren't born here and my dad wasn't born here. Uh, so like they they do like the same thing where it's like they'll they'll Oh, okay, you know what? A really good example is, okay, so like let's say um, like a family just had a baby, right? 
Um, and like they just had a baby and um, they'll they'll be like, and if like the little baby, you know, they start going like the three years old or whatever, they're toddlers and you can, right? When you're toddlers, you can actually see more of their complexion, their hair color, you know, how, they, mm-hmm. how they're gonna turn out as they're adults or as they're like growing. Um, and they'll be like, oh yeah, like, you know, está bien güerita, tiene el pelo, tiene, no, tiene los ojos verdes, tiene el pelo um, rubio or whatever, whatever they say, or claro, whatever they want to say. Um, and they'll be like, oh my God, like, it's so pretty. Like, they'll be like, oh my God, está bien bonita, whatever, she's so cute. Or if it's like a little boy, whatever, está bien bonito con los ojos de color, and they'll say all this, you know, different crap. And then mm-hmm. it's just like, okay, but then it'll be, let's say it's another baby, we're for a different family, whatever, and like, they say that family's like darker skinned, right? And it'll be like a little uh, baby. Um, and same thing, you know, they're three years old, whatever. Um, and then they'll have like, you know, darker hair, dark eyes, um, darker skin tone. And then they'll be like, oh yeah. And then they'll be like, yeah, they say, like, el, uh, está prietita o prietito. That's what my mom says, like those specific words. Um, and they'll say like, yeah. And then like, that's basically it. They, like, they'll say like, oh, like they're kind of cute. Like, you know, más of whatever. But it's not the same, like the not at all the same type of like reaction. Like, it's not like, oh, you know, like they're so cute. Están bien bonitos, están bien curiositos. Like, no, like they'll be like, oh yeah. Like the first thing they'll mention, like, oh, están prietito, whatever. Like, are you whatever? Or like gordito, mm-hmm. or whatever, right? And it's just like, okay, but like, they they're still cute you know what i mean like they're yeah. still they're little kids like like no like you can't just base beautifulness off a skin color like no that's not okay like that's not okay. and like all kids are all like little kids the all they're all adorable like like no like i don't know but that just annoys me because like that'll happen all the time they'll be like oh yeah they had a baby like oh yeah light colors uh, dark color not cute yes cute. i'm like like no like stop it's just yeah but that was just my thing i'm just like i hate that i hate that they do that yeah like, like why is it the first thing that you have to mention is that their, their skin color like just stop just be like oh yeah they had a baby congratulations for them they're cute or whatever or like if you don't think they're cute don't say anything just say oh they had a baby congratulations and you're done you don't have to mention that all their skin color not relevant like yeah but that was it no yeah like you bring up such a good point and the way that it, it penetrates families at a young age literally from birth You know, the moment that a baby's like, you know, old enough to sort of be like settled into being alive, (laughs) they're getting criticized and they're getting labeled and they're getting either appreciated or misappreciated just based off of the color of their skin. And it's something that ends up repeating throughout their lives too, because it doesn't stop when they're babies, you know, like parents and family members will say like, even like it's not always about race, but parents and family members will always say something, you know what I mean? They'll always make a comment about you. And it becomes, especially for darker people, it becomes about their skin. And it's like, "Mm," you know, like comments like, if only you were lighter, like, you know, you you know, if only your skin was a little clearer, it looked nicer. And it's like dark, dark skin is beautiful, healthy skin, regardless. Um, You know, like, like the lack of idea that it's not also getting highly like penetrated into children's minds you know as they grow up and begin to grow into themselves and like what they gonna look like especially like when they get into puberty and they get like awkward and they're like do I look ugly do I look cute and you start to define yourself by how you look um I'm gonna let Maya talk she's had her hand raised for like a long time so please please take the floor (laughs) Well, yeah, I just wanted to touch on that. Um, as soon as Anna said that, I can definitely relate. Um, yeah, my family's of Mexican descent, and we're all pretty light. It's just kind of where, you know, location-wise, we're from. Um, but all the kids, um, you know, I have brown hair, brown eyes, but my brother and my sister have colored eyes, light skin. Um, my my sister's bl- or my cousin's blonde hair, blue eyes. My other, you know, so um it's it's kind of a nickname that they grow up with like oh it's my weta my weta is gonna be 15 and it's herkinson oh it's my wedito oh my gosh you know like he's such a big boy now and it's like okay well what about the rest of us who didn't have that nickname because you're so focused on color um that like you know are you saying that our 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 fiestas our quinces were not as important as this one and you're like you know grandparents are like oh but it's my weta and it's like mm-hmm. okay but you have 10 grand children like um what about them is so much more special just because they have colored eyes like we couldn't help that um 
So yeah, I just kind of wanted to touch that, um, that personal experience that I completely relate to. And it's, Mm -hmm. and and it grows up with that child because then they, they grow up and they're like, well, I know I don't look a certain way, you know? And like you're saying, like it grows with them and it becomes part of their identity rather than them choosing for themselves, how they identify and how they see themselves. Um, And I think that can be really frustrating, um, especially with kind of finding yourself as someone who might be like Mexican American or Latin American and trying to find yourself in America and finding your identity in place. So um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to throw that in there. Oh, wow. That's, I mean, thank you for sharing. Um, I'll give you, I, I just want to say something really quick. So I'll give you a second, Anna. Um, I, I Thank you for sharing. That's super interesting because the way I've experienced it is so much more different. Like I, I, like I am the Wivita of the family, you know? And I don't like, I have like, people think my hair looks black. It's not black, um, <laughs> but I know it looks like it. Well, I have like dark eyes and I have dark hair. And it's really interesting to hear from someone else's perspective, also sort of experiencing it. Like my darker skinned cousins have experienced it. Like cousins who, very obviously are like shades darker you know like people will already make the assumption they won't be like oh you know like people will look at them and automatically assume where they're from which also isn't fair like you shouldn't be doing that based off of skin color either it's really rude (laughs) but it's really interesting to hear that from your perspective thank you I really appreciate I really appreciate that and that I kind of just wanted to share that so go ahead Anna thanks um yeah, I was just gonna like tie all this back to like um, to mental health, basically. Well, actually, before that, like I can kind of like talk a little bit about like my experience and like within my own family. So, I so out of like so I it's three of us, three siblings. I am the one with I guess you can say like the darker skin tone, and my brother and sister they fit more of that Eurocentric like beauty standards because mm-hmm. they're tall, they're lean, they have way they have lighter skin than I do. Um, and yeah, I would always get comments, um, kind of like what what all of you or like what Maya was, was kind of talking about. Um, but that definitely like plays a, uh, has a toll on one's mental health. Right. Um, because one, you're trying to navigate like your different identities, right. Um, Chayla, um, and if, if you have any other identities, um, so it can definitely like be draining, but something else I wanted to like talk about or like bring up. Um, something that I didn't really know was a thing, but have you all heard of like those whitening creams? No. Yeah, right. Like, like for your skin. Mm-hmm. Apparently, like it's a super like prevalent thing. Um, I know L'Oreal has a whitening cream. Um, I do yeah, to just again make you fit into those like Eurocentric beauty standards. Um, and for, I read like a statistic or something and they have over like 38 million users worldwide. So like, is that what we have really come to now? (laughs) Like, that's crazy. Um, and even like, kind of like going off of that, like, um, think about when we're like editing photos or something, right. We typically tend to what, like edit it, put a filter to make ourselves like look lighter. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just crazy. The things that uh, Mm -hmm. we have come to now. Go ahead, Anna, the other Anna. Oh, uh, where's it going? Okay, yes. So I totally heard about those whitening creams. I was, I, oh, when was I? I don't remember what I was doing, but I it was, I was watching TV, some, something. I don't know what I was doing, but I heard about that. And it was like, yeah. And that like, it, like people, but I think the, when I was hearing about it, it was, um, uh, like a African American person that was using it. It wasn't necessarily like a Mexican person that like was darker skin. It was a and like that 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 like people would put that on their skin to like look lighter. And I was like, what? And like, yeah, like that. I like I don't know. That just blew my mind. I was like, I can't believe. Not only is that still sold, that 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 was invented. Like what? And like, wow that's crazy that like I just I'm like so shocked anyways but that was I was just responding to what you said but I had another thing too like have you noticed this is kind of a question that leads like a question for you guys to answer to have you guys noticed that um uh Latin American like maybe now that they're like they're probably like middle-aged uh women uh what do you notice that they usually have um rayitos 
like where it's like they have darker uh, uh, color hair, but they're either blonded completely, their diet, they will dye it completely blonde or um, uh, highlights that are blonde highlights, right? And you and like you'll notice that um, they'll um, what's another thing that they do? Oh, and like they'll <laughs> this is this is uh, this is also something they'll they'll name their children like Brian, like very American type of names, you know. And I and I like I've noticed that like it's it's if you like the name Brian, go ahead. But I feel like some people do it because they want their children to be more American. And it's yes. like I don't care. Like if you like your, if you like the name Brian because you actually like the name Brian because you think that is a beautiful name, go ahead. But like, don't name your child something that you think is just because they're American. You know what I mean? And also, don't if you like rayitos, if you like blonde hair, go ahead. But I feel like people do it because they think they want they want to be they want to be more white or more American. Like I don't know. That kind of bothers me because I feel like people do do that because of either other people telling them. Like same thing, I know how family members will tell like their children like that they're darker skin that they're not as pretty or if they are lighter skin that they are pretty. I feel like it feeds into that type of like those that 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 like that's mm -hmm. kind of the result of us or of parents saying that. Like that's the result. You know what I mean? And it's kind of just like, I don't know. I just like, I just find it like, I don't know. I want it. I want someone who does or like older people who actually do that. I want to see, I want to hear their opinion and be like, do you actually do it because you like it? Or is it because you think you look more white? Like, I want to know because it's like, if you do like it because of that, go ahead. I'm not judging you. I don't care. There's a lot of girls that like, even that are, that are not, um, that I don't think like that's why they do it. They just think it's cute, you know, but I, I like, I want to know because I feel like if you look most of them have highlights or they dye their their hair blonde what do you guys think i'm conflicted because my aunt dyes her hair blonde but she named her daughter ariel i don't know how why like i like a part of me is like ariel like that's kind of white you know <laughs> but then my name's kaden <laughs> so i can't like talk, talk at the same time <laughs> I think you're like calling out very valid things though is this tendency to try to favor western culture like you know and try to americanize oneself or your kids if you can't americanize yourself parents like to project that <laughs> a lot onto their kids especially if their kids come out lighter than them oh yeah they they love it oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, in the novelas in novelas do you not see in novelas like they'll be literally blonde blue-eyed they speak spanish obviously because it's a novela um and like you know it airs on the univision or whatever um and like and you look at them and you're like that's not what people i mean yes there's people in mexico that look like that but that's not what the majority of people people in mexico look like no. like no like no. there is a bunch of different skin colors in mexico there's darker people there's very white pe there, i mean light people that have blue eyes and the the that same same like, same thing but it's like mm -hmm. most of the ones in the telenovelas most of the people in the telenovelas yeah look like that and it's like is that is that a coincidence that like they're not projecting the majority and they're projecting the minority that looks whiter and has blonde hair and mm -hmm. has blue eyes you know like mm -hmm. no you you bring up a really good point in essentially the way institutions promote this kind of colorism um and you know how it ultimately kind of stems from racism <laughs> um in the end like it's it's one it's something that stems from racism and two it's something that our institutions feed into and they kind of do it on not even kind of they do it on purpose uh and they're not necessarily doing reparations to undo it because it you're right like there's a vast majority of mexicans who don't have blonde hair and who don't have blue eyes i know so many mexicans i don't know why that's such a funny statement to me but like my high school was like 99% Latinx kids. Like we had a lot of kids who were Mexican or like at least very dark skinned Hispanics. You know, none of them, some of them did dye their hair blonde. None of them naturally had blonde hair. None of them had even light brown eyes, let alone like any kind of color, like very, like maybe one person out of an entire like class of students. Um, and the media does play a really strong role in sort of favoring and choosing, especially with things like, like, oh, especially Hollywood, 
being a very powerful tool in framing how Latinx people look like, um, but especially doing it in a way that is subliminally manipulative and putting characters who are lighter skinned and more Americanized and um, like positions that are more beneficial or seen as more beneficial versus darker skin characters a lot of the time getting put in antagonizing roles or in antagonizing situations, um, you know, sort of creating these subliminal links between white is right, essentially, and like anything that isn't is bad. Um, and sort of just another layer to the reinforcement. But yeah, sort of just the role of the media and like what, especially because right now the media is entirely controlled by like 45 year old women, like you were saying, Anna, like older, like middle-aged older people kind of just inputting what they want. <laughs> and a lot of the times also because the way that like the media works, it, you know, it requires like a degree and it requires like a certain level of education and networking that gets denied, especially to darker people um, or people of color, you know? And so it's essentially old white people putting out what they want <laughs> and not like people who care about diversity or whose first thought is diversity because it's something that they're more in they have more intimate knowledge of. I kind of also just want to hear your guys' thoughts about like portrayal of Latinx, like Chilat folks in the media, there's like a long history of it not being good. <laughs> yeah, you know, it kind of tends to range from either being fetishized or criminalized, um, which are not, neither are really what's popping, honestly, neither are good, <laughs> neither are beneficial to like just the betterment of like Chicanx, Latinx people in America. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think growing up, it was kind of hard to see myself in the media and um, even like within my own family because we were constantly told that we didn't look Mexican or we didn't look a certain way um, because we were a little bit, you know, we're fair skin, we um, lighter complexion. Uh, and, you know, even me and my cousins, I lived in Sacramento for a while. So I got a lot of exposure to sun and I was just one of those kids who could tan really easily. Um, and so I would come home or come back to the Bay Area and I would look a lot darker than my cousins and people would definitely be like, oh, she's not your sister because she's a lot darker than you, but you guys can't be related either. And it's like, well, no, we are. Um, so it was kind of a struggle because we all look so different, even within our family, to really mm -hmm. identify those people in the media. And then when we were seeing those things, it was what we were thrown, you know, what, what the institutions were throwing at us which were like the blonde hair and the blue eyes so then it kind of was like wait so does it look like my cousin who has blonde hair blue eyes or like what is this that we are kind of portraying as the you know the uh, the the normal or the stereotypical and I think that's um yeah it was kind of a hard thing to navigate and it still is it, it hasn't been you know it's not eradicated it's still an issue so mm -hmm. um yeah go ahead Anna <laughs> Okay, so what I was going to ask you guys was, we kind of talked about this in the beginning, but like, why do you think that this is still a thing? And also, why do you think it is just like, like, why was it started? Like, why is this idea that um, like lighter skin is better, darker skin is inferior? And also, why is it still prevalent? Straight up white supremacy. It stemmed from white supremacy. It stemmed from colonizers thinking that they were better because that they were European and had a Western civilization instead of a non-Western civilization. They implemented that in like corners of their society in the way that people had to socially interact and the way that people had to think about marrying other people in like their legal system, who was recognized as a citizen, who wasn't, who's denied and who has access to education and income and ownership of themselves, um, essentially, and sort of the microaggressions and the way that they've been just taught and reinforced within institutions in more and more subliminal ways just over time, neoliberalism, um, <laughs> to like throw terms around, like essentially like kind of just being neoliberalist, there we go, um, and not wanting to give like control of the self and of like history to people of color 
Um, and I think it's just part of the ingrained white supremacy and racism that still exists within the Americas. I don't just mean like the United States, like it's a really prevalent thing still in like Mexico and all of Latin America and Central America. Um, it's, a, it's a still a really massive issue um, and it, it still needs addressing and it needs unlearning um, and it needs reprocessing and sort of like reevaluating the systems as a whole and the ways in which they do act racist and they do act sexist and the way that they incorporate colorism actively and the way that they influence how people still consume like colorist ideology essentially just racist ideology yeah it like it basically all stemmed from like the colonizers being like we're light and then they started obviously raping you know indigenous people right so then obviously then um that obviously led to children that were both you know like half indigenous half um uh, uh, mm -hmm. well spanish right if they were like colonized by spain um and so then obviously that led to the mixing of the colors and so like some kids you know were darker some kids were lighter right so then mm -hmm. it's like like that and then that just like led to everything because it's like now we have the mixing of color but obviously the mixing of color is resulting in kids that are lighter kids that are darker and obviously just generations of that generations mm -hmm. and then it just like it just led to like like uh, i feel like it has to do with like now it has like now in the present day it has to do with like parents like yeah parents, no i like, feel like parents definitely still fuel this like they 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 don't realize what they're doing and they don't realize that it stemmed from the colonizers literally taking over and like raping their ancestors like if we t like if you t sat down and talked to your parents and you were like you you realize this is because your like people like your ancestors like like indigenous ancestors and you, like our ancestors came from like like we were born because of this whole like horrible situation you know what yeah. i mean and, like they don't realize that they're just like oh like what like there's some there's some people who don't realize that that they are indigenous and spanish or uh, european like there's people that are like oh i'm just mexican but they don't realize the history of it and that's mm -hmm. also like, if people understood that then like they would realize that's like like it's fucked up you know what i mean it's mm -hmm. like very like it, like you like people like there was like a it's, survey it's on this. hypocritical yeah there it's was very like, hypocritical and there's like a survey there was a survey about this that people would be like what are you like are you half a uh, mestizo right that's this the, the, the term for it. are you mestizo mm -hmm. are you just like whatever i'm just mexican like you don't like really know and like that most of the people were like yeah I'm, like i'm just mexican like what do you mean i'm mestizo like what do you mean i'm mixed like literally mexicans and other people from Latin america were literally mixed babies like that's what yeah. we are you know and people like don't realize that and it's mm -hmm. i feel like that's also like that's a big base for people to realize that it's like because of this that is why there's colorismo because there was colonists there was indigenous people they mm -hmm. they mixed and not in a good way and it like oh. you know yeah that's that, that's my thing and if you want to talk no that's that's super important just i just want to say something really quickly i'm sorry anna um the spanish did something that the english did not when they colonized like their section of the Americas and that was they did not make it illegal to marry someone of a different race they were just not considered they were just still kind of considered like property and they weren't considered like free persons you know and so we have an incredibly wide range of what normal might look like in Mexico in Latinx countries in Spanish in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries Maybe with the removal of Spain. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a really hypocritical thing. And I, you know, it kind of begs a question, kind of like touching back on what Maya said earlier, is there really a, like a stereotypical like chai lap person? What does that really, what does that actually look like? Does that actually exist? Um, I just begged us a whole ask another question. I'm sorry, please. <laughs> Anna, please touch back on what you were going to say earlier. Oh, yeah, I was going to kind of like touch back on like what Anna was saying, like about parents and them just not maybe like teaching us about all that. Totally valid. But at the same time, I'm not trying to be in favor of parents or anything, but um, 
I mean, they weren't taught this right in school. We're only taught a specific curriculum, right? Um, even like us, like in our K through 12 education, we were only taught about all this. We were just taught, we're just taught like one way, right? It isn't until like we get access to like our higher education that we learn this. And maybe not even then, like most STEM majors, they don't have the opportunity to take all these like humanities classes, right? Um, so it's mostly like humanities majors who might get access to this information and actually do something about it. Maybe like how we're all doing. Um, so yeah, just wanted to, I guess, just point that out. Um, maybe like when going into conversations with parents, we can't really go in with the mm -hmm. expectation that they're going to like fully understand because yeah, they, they just didn't have the same education as we do. Right. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make that point. No. Yeah. And that's a good point that they might not understand where, like that this jargon that we have a really big part of the reason why we have this because we do have access to higher education where people debate on like the way in which language is racist or the way in which institutions themselves are racist um, and like promote colorism and promote this like ranking of individuals based off color. Um, thank you, that was, those were all super good points. Yeah, no, I just wanted to kind of talk about a little bit of what Anna um, was t talking about too, um, that, that aspect of like that our parents may not or our grandparents uh, may not have had the access to kind of these broader stories and really I felt like for me it was a lot of I had to go search out things that I wanted to know yeah. um, and that can be a lot for some people for some people they don't want to know because it's easier not to know um, and for some people it's really part of finding who they are and like what does it mean to be you know a Mexican or a Mexican American or Chai Lat American or whatever you are or identify as so um I think that that was kind of part of my experience. And I think that, you know, like you said, like educating parents and, and, and yes, they're not going to understand, but I think for me, a big part of it with my own family is to really just bring awareness of these different ideas and be like, this is what I learned. I am sharing this with you. I, I know I'm not going to, you know, change your, you know, life um, beliefs and ideas, but this is, you know, maybe what you were were taught is not the most accurate or the most um, correct. Um, and so, so yeah, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, Anna, please. T thank you, Maya. Yes, thank you, Maya. You mentioned something about um, um, it's easier not to know, right? How some of your family members have said that. And I just wanted to bring up like a quick um, story. So the other day I was talking to my dad and we were kind of having a good conversation. Like we were kind of like talking about like um, the issue of like race and incar incarceration and all that type of stuff. Um, and it seemed like he was actually like getting on the same boat as me, but then he ended up concluding with, Ay, Paula, um, if, if you didn't attend like college, no, 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 how do you say it? It was like college is just like brainwashing you like you're stressing about all this type of stuff if you didn't know about all this you wouldn't be stressing and that just I thought he we were like finally on the same page but then he ends up saying that and I just like really like yeah like obviously they weren't taught the same way as we were um maybe for him yeah it's easier for him not to know but like for me like now that I know all of this like it's way harder for me to try just to just like ignore all this and like do nothing about it, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, other oh, Anna, please. I, yeah, we're like, okay, okay. So uh, Anna, like, you know how you like kind of disagreed, I guess, not really disagreed, but you added on to what I said, right? Um, And I like that actually totally reminded me, that's actually a really good point. And I was actually gonna say that, but I, you know, when you're talking and you move what you're gonna say. Um, So I was actually gonna say that like, it, when I said, yeah, it's the parents' fault, but it's, I was going to add, like, it, okay, so you guys are right, and you guys are totally, and I totally agree, but I was going to say that it's their fault, but not really, because it's been ingrained in them since forever, since literally since colonialism, right? So that's what I was like, going to say is that it's, literally like colonialism's fault like that's literally like the fault and that's, that's actually a big statement that i was gonna say is that 
this happened because some European country decided they wanted to fucking colonize Mexico or other Latin American c- countries. And it's just like, it's just, it's so like infuriating, you know what I mean? Because like, this is a consequence because of that like like that this is this this right now like basically think about this this podcast is happening because of that event that happened all like long time ago you know what i mean like this is the consequence of it and it's like that's like wow like it's just like infuriating that because some fucking white people wanted to come and were like you know let's go colonize mexico and um uh other latin american countries venezuela whatever right all these different places and like this is like the result of it and it's kind of like it's like a big thing that people actually do talk about where it's like uh third world countries like are suffering all these different like uh like people like this is a thing like a theory it's like third world countries are third world countries because these are the countries that were colonized right they are the ones that have all these issues because they are the ones that have been colonized well european countries aren't third world countries because they haven't been colonized they have been the colonizers so like like all this shit literally i feel like is because of that you know and it's just it's just i don't know like that's just my hot take on that it's just like yeah it's like colonialism's colonialism's fault and i just yeah okay getting meta (laughs) i mean it is colonialism's fault that colorism exists (laughs) Uh, i'll agree with that that's totally true especially like spanish colonialism you bring up a lot of interesting points that was a super good point yeah oh my god that was a super good point you guys brought up amazing points honestly i don't know how to add on to what anna said i feel like anna wrapped it up like super perfectly do you agree do you disagree am i wrong because honestly like i mean stupid shit too like honestly this I mean I definitely do find myself agreeing with a lot I don't I definitely want to read more about the whole like every colonized place is like a third world mainly because I don't like using the term third world country um but I mean you are not wrong at the same time (laughs) like I'm thinking about it and I'm I'm like this is I'm not saying this. yeah like a lot of countries that have experienced heavily like what like heavily western intrusion and invasion essentially are are still facing those impacts um and like especially in Latin America because they've also gotten the U.S in infiltrating doing stuff like going into panama like the whole panama canal happened kind of very like illegally or what should have been very illegally um (laughs) you know so it's you definitely bring up a very good point that colonization is almost like has almost been like an everlasting impact from the moment it happened um, and that a lot of our society is still built on what was rooted in colonialism and sort of the invasion of other people's land, essentially, um, along with like racism and like white superiority. And that is just a very like highly dense, compact subject. And I thank you guys for like coming to talk about it because it's, there's a lot of aspects to it because it affects a lot of different, it comes at us from a lot of different points of society um you know like it comes in the media the institution into the family um and it's hard because people are not going to always agree with you you know like my dad says the same thing like what are those like what are they brainwashing you with in college and I'm like you into college what do you mean (laughs) right (laughs) um he's like they're brainwashing you and I'm like did Dominguez Hills like not brainwash you like you should have gotten your money back (laughs) um if you went there to learn nothing (laughs) like it and even my mom even my mom's like "Mm, I don't know and I'm like mom come on like what do you what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> like this is not like this is not fair treatment, regardless of if they're dark and whatever that like entails, or if they're black. Like, come on, mom. Um, don't be like hesitant to say black is beautiful or that dark skin 
Latinx people are beautiful. Like, anyways, that's a whole nother story of me getting on my parents. Dark skin is beautiful. So. Dark skin is beautiful. Dark skin is beautiful, and we need to treasure dark skin because yes, glorious. Um, yeah. Thank you all again for coming out. You guys have been great. This has been just such an amazing conversation with all of you. Um, thank you for our listeners for listening. <laughs> um we hope we gave you some useful info or at least like uh sort of useful like earworms to think about and help you reanalyze the way colonism is still impacting your everyday life thank y'all for listening bye bye